Hi everyone, welcome to another Blue White Familiars video. Today, instead of playing some matches, we're going to explain the deck, how it works, maybe how you can pilot it, uh, try to make how you're piloting it a little bit faster, so you don't ever time out. So that's kind of not very fun. And uh, get you up to date on where I'm at, what the meta looks like, and how to attack it. So, if you're not aware, this deck is called Familiars because we are using this card Sunscape Familiar, which says green and blue spells you cast cost one less to cast. So cost reducers and cheating on mana has always been extremely powerful in Magic just because the way the game is played is mostly revolved around how much mana you have. So the Familiar enables a combo, and that combo is two Familiars, one Archaeomancer and one Ghosty Flicker. Ghosty Flicker says, exile two target artifacts, creatures, or lands you control and return those cards to the battlefield under your control. And we have Archaeomancer here, which says, when it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. So if we have two familiars, Archaeomancer and Flicker, we can actually Ghosty Flicker an island. So we tap the island for blue, Flicker targeting the island and Archaeomancer. That means we just use our Answer to get back Ghosty Flicker, the island comes into play untapped, and that's mana neutral. So you just keep flickering however much you want. The way that you combo with that is that we have a card called uh, God Pharaoh's Faithful, which says whenever you cast a blue, black, or red spell, gain a life. So therefore, with these cards in play and uh, an island, we can gain infinite life. So usually that's enough for you to not lose. Um, if you want to actually win with the combos, you can include another card called Sage's Rodenism, which says whenever another blue creature enters the battlefield under your control, target player mills two cards. So with, with these cards in play and this card in play, you get infinite uh, triggers on this and your opponent loses their library. So that would be the end of the game. The way that this deck normally plays out is, is not really a combo deck as opposed to combo control. So you are trying to set up uh, a situation where it's impossible for you to lose versus you're trying to set up a situation where you combo kill them. So we could think about it like uh, something like Mogwarts, their combo makes them win versus Familiars, our combo makes us not lose. So the whole deck is kind of built to... Um, get yourself into a situation where it's impossible for you to lose. And to do that, we have four Godfrost Faithful to gain a ton of life, um, six Cantrips to accelerate our game plan, as well as these uh, synergize very well with the Faithfuls because you can turn to play Faithful plus a Cantrip, gain a life, and then you keep stringing Cantrips together, gaining tons of life, get out of range of really any aggro. And then, um, so we're using four Preordain because it's the best Cantrip we can use and two Ponders. I've decided not to use Brainstorm here because Ponder lets us accelerate into whatever we need to do the most successfully versus Brainstorm um, increases the card quality of our hand but doesn't actually um, help us find the next thing that we're looking to do. So in each phase of the game we have certain things that we're trying to accomplish. So in the beginning of the game Ponder is looking for lands looking for familiars, looking for uh, creatures to keep going. And in the end of the game, you're looking for getting past lands, you're looking for combo pieces, maybe looking for uh, sideboard cards. So that's kind of our early game setup. We have four snaps. And uh, if you're not aware, snap is two mana, return target creatures to its owner's hand, untap up to two lands. And this synergizes very well with Azorius Chancery, which taps for two. So if we tap this plus an island, just playing snap gains us one mana of either white or blue. I'm also playing one Echoing Truth as a catch-all, and uh, one Counterspell is also a catch-all. Two Prohibits here as additional Counterspells. Prohibits counter anything with mana value two or less, and then if you kick it, it's four or less. And the majority of the spells in Popper uh, will be hit by Prohibit, and you can kick it to counter a monarch. Uh, that might come up. I like Prohibit specifically because of Fadex for spells that are sprite. 
But if there aren't any phase or spell setter sprites in the format, maybe prohibit wouldn't be what you really want. When I was initially playing prohibits uh, in Sanctuary times, there's a lot of Forest Monarch, and prohibit hits things like of course Sky Fisher and Glint Hawk very well as well. So that's our first, most of our uh, first two columns. The rest of the deck is made up of value creatures and uh, flickers. So we have four Seagate Oracles, which is a 1-3 that uh, has a slate of hand attached to it. Look at the top two cards of your library, take one and put the other on the bottom. And then four Moldrifters. Moldrifter is just the best value creature in Popper. Uh, you can evoke it for two and a blue, and then, uh, or you can cast it for four and a blue, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw two cards. So if you don't even have a familiar in play, you can use Ephemerate, which is exile creature you control and return to the battlefield. It has rebound. And so this is four mana, draw four cards. If they don't interact with it, it'll be four mana, draw six cards, which is very powerful. And we've seen Ephemerate be used in lots and lots of different types of things. So here, the other uh, card I have in the list is Deep Analysis. Deep Analysis is four mana, target player draws two cards, and it has flashback for one and a blue, and pay three life. The paying three life doesn't really matter in the main deck because we have so many Godfather's Faithfuls. Well, the whole point of the deck is to get out of range of everything, so life gain isn't going to be a problem. Usually we want more Deep Analysis the more Fey you're going to be seeing, because Deep Analysis helps you bust through the counter spells. They can't really afford to counter something that uh, you just get immediate two for one. So if they counter your four mana, yeah, they traded their card for four of your mana, but you still get to pay two mana to, to go for it again. And I have another one in the sideboard in this specific list to bring in in grindy matchups. Um, also in the main deck, we have six fetches. I've decided to go with four barons, two wilds, and you could have a split, but the four barons allows you to have a, uh, I, basically an untapped land when you really, really need it uh, later in the game or early in the game. And you can always go turn one ash barons, turn two tap it, play chance three, pick up ash barons, cycle it for a land, and then move on with your life. I have two planes. We just want to be able to have one always and the second one if needed. Usually um, I don't fetch the second one because we end up trying a chance or something and it won't matter. But we don't want a lot of planes because our deck almost entirely relies on blue mana. So we want to keep as much blue mana as possible. So the rest of the lands are filled out with just islands. Initially when I started playing familiars, um, the deck was not playing ponders. was playing four deep analysis or preordain and 22 lands, which could potentially work, but I think that the things that we need to do in Popper are so um, important that it's better to take these two ponders over that 20 second land and have the ability to find what you need as fast as possible. So in the sideboard of this list, I'm playing three Hydroblast, which uh, destroys a red permanent or counters a red spell. And I've decided to play Hydro Blast instead of uh, Blue Elemental Blast because I could just cast it and need it to gain a life. Bless, I like the art better. I'm playing two Negates. You would think that maybe you'd want to play Dispel here, but Negate ends up being a uh, better Dispel most of the time whenever you have a Familiar out. So it's worth taking the risk of it costing two mana for the reward of it costing one mana and countering enchantments, artifacts, whatever. Like I said, the one deep analysis for additional grindy matches, and then uh, Sages of Rodenison. I like to bring the Sages of Rodenison in in grindy matches and uh, where comboing is important. It's also very important to save clock in uh, Magic Online or potentially in paper if you uh, might run the risk of timing out. So if your click speed isn't fast enough, then you might want to play Sages of Rodenison. The next part of my sideboard is these two last breaths. Uh, we were searching for a long time for good removal spells in white and blue, and there really aren't any. But um, last breath can snap, uh, snipe a ninja, or it can kill an opposing familiar, and uh, many of the cards that really uh, mess up your day in familiars. You'll notice that there's no fogs in my list, so I have to have some sort of removal to be able to beat aggro. And then uh, the rest of the list is filled out with basically anti-affinity. Four Dust to Dust is just the best turn three play you can possibly do to live. 
uh, against affinity, and then two revokes. Revoke existence is exile, artifact, or enchantment. So it does a little bit of work against things like pestilence or bogles. Not super reliable, but it does do something. And then you can have a turn two, kill your land, turn three, kill your lands, kill your lands. Just keep going from there. Okay, so here I've set up a solitaire to help you see how I run through things and uh, explain some of the combos. First thing that you want to do when you're playing familiars is to set up hotkeys for OK, yes, and no. For me, it's two, three, and four. Two, three, four. Uh, stop passing is five, pass turn is six, and then auto pass is eight. The auto pass is very important, and you always want to turn it on in familiars since we're a tap out deck and our stuff takes a very, very long time. It basically means whenever you're tapped out and you have nothing you. Whenever you're tapped out, you can't cast a spell, just pass. So you don't have to respond to triggers or anything. Very important. It saves you a lot of clock. Um, what I do is I put my hand on my keyboard with my uh, ring finger on the two, middle finger on the three, and pointer finger on four. So this lets me, lets me hit OK, yes, or no almost all the time. So let's see. Uh, I don't have anything to yes or no to, but I can turn off auto yields. And then if I go like this, so normally you'd have to mouse over, click OK, go over here, click OK again, target, click OK again. That's kind of a pain. And you can actually just go flicker, OK, OK, OK. So that saves quite a bit of time um, and is very important. Basically, a lot, a lot of the things that I do are to save on time. You kind of get used to it. So let's go through some of the combos. So I have all of the pieces that I need for infinite life here. As we saw, I have one faithful, one arcane answer, two familiars, uh, flicker, and an island. So I'm actually going to flicker here and here. And what you're going to auto always yield to this goes in and always yield to that. Uh, and if you want to make this go much faster, you can tap all of your lands, flicker down, uh, and then put the stack away from where you want to have the triggers. So in this case, the flicker is going to be here. So I put the stack up. And then the triggers I'm placing exactly right next to this go through flicker. So I click in here, and then I auto. So I'm just going to go across, press OK, hit the OK button again. We're going in. So we gain infinite life, theoretically. The other way to gain infinite life, which is kind of complicated, is to use one familiar, two arcane answers, snap, flicker, and faithful. So I'm just going to go ahead and snap my one familiar. So remember that familiar is a cost reducer, and that means that if ghosty flicker costs two and a blue, with one familiar out, it costs just one and a blue. So snap with one familiar out costs just blue. So we can, let's see, one, two, three, flicker here. Snap. And I'm just going to set back up so that I have no mana floating. Okay. So I go tap, tap. To get um, to get infinite life here, what we do is we flicker the two mancers, get the snap, snap the faithful, replay the faithful. So that's all of our four mana from our two chanceries. Flicker, float a white, snap, snap this, untap, replay it. Something that's very important uh, when you're looping flickers and snaps and stuff um, is to always select the top card first and then the bottom card. So watch this. Flicker, if I target here, then when I go here, this spell uh, here, it's already being selected, so it's enlarged from the interface, which makes selecting this one much more difficult. So if I snap this, untap, replay it, tap that, flicker. 
Now, if I snap, if I select the snap here, it's much less uh, difficult to do. And I think, so I've already had my card size as high as possible, so it's not going to get any bigger than that. But you see, you really want to increase your accuracy. Another thing that I like to do is um, flicker as much as I can, or and get as many snaps in hand as possible. So I have more snaps in the yard already. And I can just go snap this, untap, replay it, snap it again, untap, replay it, something like that. And then I can just get all my snaps back. So you'll see that it's a little bit easier to uh, select now. That one was already out of the way, but. And you can float a bunch of mana. So that one I had to have a little bit less accuracy on. And then this one I'm going to have to have a much higher accuracy. So I have to be very careful, click, and then go. And that is the loop there. Let's go ahead and snap this again. So I'll play familiar, play faithful. Now I have another combo where I can make infinite white mana. Doesn't specifically matter here, but you can see that if I flicker and then snap the faithful, Now that left me with a white mana. Doesn't particularly matter. Now I can ephemerate, um, ephemerate to gain mana in situations like these. I can go tap tap, ephemerate for snap, snap this. Oops, that's my fault. Okay, so snap, snap this. Didn't really gain mana there, but we'll just <laughs> messed up. Okay, so go to the next turn. Let's get rid of these. So what I want to show you here is how I handle the rebounding of Ephemerate. Always want to auto yield to these. And they actually change the exile window so that it doesn't pop up all the time. It's actually this exile window here. So what I do is I pop it out, put it over here, kind of near where my arcane answers are going to go. When your creatures come back onto the battlefield, they always show up on the rightmost side. So I believe, let's see. Gets a little bit lame, but what happens is it's first in, last out, I think. I don't know. The one on the bottom or on the left is going to be the one that you actually want to click on. It's very convoluted. So we're going to ephemerate here, press OK, get that back, ephemerate, press OK, get that back. I think that covers pretty much everything. The only other thing would be the milling combo, and uh, I guess I can go to side... Well, it doesn't lay sideward at Salter, but if you imagine that this were the mill creature, the only thing else that you want to do is for the mill trigger, you can right-click the trigger and say always yes, always yield. So let's just go ahead and uh, get that set up. Okay. So I loaded up Solitaire and where I have the Sages or Denison out, I have the two familiars, and I have the Flicker and Arcane Answer. What you're going to want to do is tap all of your blue, Flicker here, and then go see Flicker. And then here, you're going to hit Save Targets first, because if you hit Always Yield, it won't let you click Save Targets, because this trigger will just go away, and then Always Yield. So this is going to go like that. And we'll just go ahead and mill ourselves out. And if you always have your uh, windows in the same spot and your trigger windows in the same location, you can much more easily just kind of like mindlessly click. Two more. So now we are fully milled out, but we have another win condition. If our opponent is has the monarch or something, we can just never deck. So we tap our mortuary mire. Flicker, Meyer, and Arcane Answer. And I'm going to resolve this first, then this. Oops, no, I messed that up. <laughs> okay, yes. All right, do it again. Just put a creature on top. 
Uh, yes. So now we have one card in the library again, and if I pass, I'll just draw that creature. Uh, well, this is not a good uh, do. Get that window back. Just gonna go ahead and snap my uh, sages row here to show you how it works. Okay, so we drew the Seagate Oracle. We have no cards in, uh, we have no creatures, blah. we have no cards in our library, but we can just continue to flicker here and stack cards on top. Uh, another thing that this does is when you are out of cards, like, oops, just go ahead and play this, and then, uh, so I put the upkeep stop. So upkeep, I let's say that I needed my second Arcane answer. On upkeep, what you can do is flicker here. If I had to tap out on their turn or something, and then get the Arcane answer, yes, and then you'll immediately draw it for turn. So sometimes putting an upkeep stop on your turn is very important. Uh, I think that colors all of the combos that we usually do. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the matchups. Alright, anyway. Um, here what we have is the MTG Goldfish uh, top decks for the last um, 30 days or whatever. So let's just talk about what our good matchups are and what our bad matchups are. I would say that Boros Monarch is definitely a good matchup. Check. Uh, Bogles is potentially sketchy, so we'll put a dash. Uh, Mono Blue Fairies can be tough if they have a nut draw. Tron is generally pretty good because we have uh, more blue mana than they do and we can probably win for, uh, in the beginning. Jeskai Midrange, pretty good. Uh, any deck that's a control deck versus familiars, familiars are going to probably win just because they have a higher amount of ability to play counter spells because we're cheating on mana. Burn, very good matchup. Uh, Affinity has been okay, so that's kind of what this is about. If you have this entire sideboard and you play well, then it's going to be good. So let's say those are good matchups. I would say that Fairies is relatively favored, but can be very tough. So it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be like 50-50, 60-40. Pestilence, good matchup. Stompy, pretty good matchup. Any sort of mid-range deck, very good matchup. Uh, Elves is going to be a bit tough. And Mono Black Control is very, very good. So as you can see, we have a pretty good matchup against most of the uh, top decks in the format. And that makes me feel pretty confident about it. The deck that we don't want to see, for sure, would be something like Cycle Storm. Because this deck, you can't interact with it with snaps and stuff. You have to draw all of your uh, dispels at the right time. We don't have a lot of main deck counter spells, so it becomes kind of a problem. Or something like uh, fast, other sorts of fast combo. They can be problematic. So that's another reason why I have the last breaths on the sideboard, to defeat fast combo like walls. So let's go into how to sideboard for these matchups. So for affinity, either... Grixis or Red Black. Very simple. Oops. Let's move this back where it was. These Hydro Blasts are coming in. These Dust to Dust are coming in. These Revoke Existences are coming in. We're going to get nine cards. We're going to be cutting the Deep Analysis. We're going to be cutting Echoing Truth. Counterspell. God for us Faithful. And one Flicker. So, how does this work post board? You basically want to be mulliganing to a position where you can draw your dust to dust or you have it in hand and play it turn three. Once you play it turn three, you can just make sure that they don't get the opportunity to play the game and they can never uh, go over the top of you. Alright, so those are done. Check, check. So Boros Monarch, or, well, this is really Boros Bully here. 
or as bully, what they're going to be doing is bringing in pyros versus you. But we do want this deep analysis. So your deep analysis, Sage and Bro Denison, if you believe that you might time out, and then some negates. Probably don't want revoke existence because Echoing Truth does the same thing. So they're kind of slow. You can also potentially bring in Hydro Blasts. And you would want to be cutting versus Boros Bully some number of Seed Oracle, probably just one. Uh, a Ponder, Faithful. Now, if you're bringing in the Sage of Denison, probably cut a Snap. Mm. It's kind of tough there. Like, do I want to cut Snap? Do I want to cut Faithful? Probably want all your Ponders. On the draw, you can cut, up, cut more Cantrips. On the play, you probably want to keep them in. Definitely need to be able to maintain our life total. But if you're against something like uh, Boros Monarch, you actually want to bring in Last Breath and then uh, cut more Snaps. Probably just go down to one Snap. So that could be a plan against Forest Monarch. Womp. For Fadex. Oops. For Is It Fey and Blue Black Fey, I have been bringing in the Last Breaths. I don't want the Deep Analysis, and then the Counterspell Speed is going to change. For Is It Fey, we're going to cut Counterspell. Cut the Echoing Truth. Cut one snap. Bring those over. Probably just one ponder. Something like this. We want the Hydro Blasts for their Screds and their Pyros and their Lightning Bolts and definitely want it for their Monarch creature. Counterspell is kind of weak there. And then these two cards are a little bit iffy. You don't really need the snaps quite as much, and Echoing Truth is going to be doing very much. Versus um, Demir Fey, we're going to leave the Counterspell in. We're going to not bring in the Hydro Blast, of course, and bring in the Negates. So that's pretty clean. All right. So, versus Bogles. We don't have a lot that we can do against that deck, but we're going to be bringing in our Revoke Existences, cutting the Deep Analysis, cutting the Snaps. The plan being just to try to set up Infinite Life against them or counter the things that matter. versus Burn. Burn is probably one of our best matchups just because we have so many counter spells that, and uh, we have main deck life gain. We're going to cut the deep analysis, and then I'm going to trim on these cards. Because Familiar doesn't actually matter that much. You're just trying to live. Ephemerate, uh, not super useful. We're not trying to outvalue them. And a second Arcane Mancer, by the time you have Arcane Mancer coming into play, you either want to be lost. So you just need all of these. What you can also bring in is Last Breaths. I'm probably not going to bring them in lately, but this can kill the Thermo Alchemist and uh, let you live. You can actually kill your own creature if you want to continue like living in the late game. Mono Blue Fairies is a bit different than the other Fairies lists. I'm probably I'm going to be bringing in just these cards. Probably actually just I'm going to be cutting the Deep Analysis, I think, for the Last Breaths, cutting Counterspell for Negate. And that's mostly because. Um, Mono Blue is a an aggro deck, and we don't really have time to be playing Deep Analysis. We just need to tempo them. If we can get to the late game, we're probably going to win with our Multiptrics. But they, we don't want them to win with their 5-1-1 uh, one, one Flyers. Okay, so Tron. Versus Tron, we're going to be completely cutting the Faithfuls. 
and some number of snaps. Going to be bringing in a lot of uh, counter spells in the Sages row. Can probably get rid of the Echoing Truth, but I do like to have it versus them. So you, I think I would probably just do this, uh, because the Echoing Truth can make their Bondage Ornaments go back to hand when they aren't ready for it, and then really tempo them a little bit. It's not necessarily something that you want, so you could potentially just do the uh, cuts like this. All right, so Pestilence. I'm going to be bringing in basically all of these cards. Your goal here is just to not let them resolve the Pestilence or not let it stick around. But in the late game, you can just uh, post war and you can set up a, a situation where you can mill them out. Snaps aren't very useful against them. Godfrey's Faithful aren't that useful. If they're a mid-range deck, so they're playing Pestilence mid-range, you would be wanting to bring in the Last Breaths. But if it's Control Pestilence, you don't necessarily need to bring in the Last Breaths. You can, uh, versus the Control Pestilence, go down to one Faithful, but if it gets mid-range, you want to bring in all, or just leave in one. And we want to leave in some Faithfuls because if we take them all out, they can just kill us with their uh, Guardian Beats if they can set up an early uh, attack. So Stompy. Stompy here, we would cut the Deep Analysis for two Last Breaths. And then we want one Revoke Existence. So we could also cut the Counterspell, I think. So that would be your swap for, for Stompy. And then you basically want to try to tempo them and set up infinite life or infinite snaps. Against any uh, mid-range deck, um, any of the wildfire mid-range decks, we're going to be taking these out, bringing in three hydros and sages redemption and deep analysis. And then uh, going to be going down on some number of faithfuls, keeping these in, some number of snaps, and uh, Ponder, potentially the Echoing Truth. Just one prohibit. So what I want to be able to do here is to counterspell their big creature. Prohibit's not that good at that. If that counterspell can kill the Monarch, Hydroblast can get their Monarch, can also nab the Wildfires, and then eventually try to Sage Zero Dennis and mill them out. Okay. Um, against Elves. This is a deck where you basically just have to try to win as fast as possible. So we're taking our Last Breaths, Negates, and get rid of all, all the Faithfuls. So you might ask, how are we going to win if we don't have life gain? Well, they have dinky creatures if they're not killing you. So you just get rid of all the Faithfuls and try to bring it to interaction. I'm maxing out on snaps, echoing through last breaths. Negates are going to be for their uh, negate is counters their winding way, lead the stampede, stuff like that. And then we can probably just get rid of one of these deep analysis. Let's try to be as low to the ground as possible. You could also not have the deep analysis, or not cut the deep analysis and cut the counter spell. But I like anything that can counter Lead the Stampede, Winding Way, or Distant Melody. And the last one on the list is Mono Black Control, which we would probably just bring in Negates and Deep Analysis. Not even really need Sages for Denison. Can cut probably one or two of these. Some number of snaps. Something like that. If you're low on clock, you could bring in the Sages for Denison and then cut maybe a ponder. So mid-range, you don't need the cantrips quite as much because you're not trying to accelerate as hard. All right, so the other thing that we want to talk about was sideboard cards. We 
we can uh, look at black first. So for black, we have Reaping the Graves, which can matter. It's return target creature from a graveyard to your hand with Storm and cast down. If you want to be playing three color deck, you probably want to be playing Thriving Isles. But cast down is like the best removal spell in Pauper right now. And uh, Reaping the Graves has a lot of value. But I think that Reaping the Graves uh, is not necessary when we have the Mortuary Mire in the deck. For, uh, let's see, for red, We could have some Holy Light, High Rebel Blast. We're going to get some sideboard cards, Lightning Bolt. Flame Slash. Uh, Sunlance. Alright, so back to it. Here I've set up uh, what some sideboard cards are that you might want to play. We have um, Stonehorn Dignitary, obviously one of the best fogs in the format. It lets them skip their combat turn, makes them skip their combat turn. So you can actually stack combat skips with these. You can make them, if you flicker this three or four times, then they have three or four combat skips. Holy Light is pretty decent against elves or token decks that are non-white. Uh, leave No Trace, obviously very good against Bogles, and Sunlance is a white removal spell that you can use, but it's kind of medium. Serrated Arrows is something that you can use to take out Fairies or take out Guardian, but um, you have to use Flickers to reset it, and without having three Flickers in the deck, it's not quite as good as it used to be. For black sideboard cards, as I talked about, we have Cast Down, Destroy Target Non-Legendary Creature, Reap in the Graves, and then uh, two more cards that you may want to use, one being Dinrova Horror, which you can flicker to um, get rid of all their permanents, and the second one being Mornwelk. Mornwelk says, has ETB target player discards two cards, so if you flicker this, it can just put them hellbent, and you can actually flicker it on their draw step to make them never be able to draw cards. While going three colors is really risky, Mornwelk and Dinrova Horror are very good payoffs for that, as well as Cast Down. And then in red, we have Pyroblast, obviously very good against Fey decks. You might want to be a Jeskai deck if there's a lot of Fey in the meta. Uh, Flame Slash is very good as a one-mana removal spell. And then Lightning Bolt can be a removal spell plus a win condition because you can flicker and bolt them over and over and over. And uh, Electricery has been good in the past against Token decks and Fey decks. Fiery Cannonade does a very similar thing now. And... Uh, that's about it. So I think I've covered most of the stuff with um, familiars. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and uh, let me know. If you need me to talk about any other specific matchups, let me know. And thank you, and good luck.